Hi guys, I've been trying to stop buying stuff in charity shops at the moment because I've got so much stuff in my junk pile that I can't keep up. If I keep buying stuff I'm never going to get through all the stuff that I've already bought. So I've been going through my junk pile and I've pulled out these two items. Nice little child's boat which for some reason I spent two pounds on according to the label. I can't believe that. That seems very expensive. But it's a nice simple child's boat. And then here I've got an infrared controlled remote control car. I've got a few of these and I like them because the radio control gear, as in the running gear, steering and the gearbox and motor are all very robust and solid and ideal for putting into other projects. But what, I, what I'm going to do here is take this apart and just pinch the motors out of it, if they're good sized motors, and I think they are, and I'll just use the motors to power this. We'll give it two motors, one either side, so we can control it by variable thrust. So that's the plan. Strip that down, just take the motors out of it and stick the motors in there. I'll have to add some other sort of radio control gear because the infrared is useless outdoors and I don't think I've got a matching transmitter for that anyway. So we might use hobby grade or we might just use simple 40 megahertz or 27 megahertz controller. I might even use the one that I was using on here because that runs two motors. Yeah, we'll have a look. We'll think. I'm afraid this is a bit of a one way trip for this one. I'm just stripping it down for the motors. I've just had a change of mind. I was just going to strip out the motor from the steering on this car, but it's just occurred to me I could just as well use this to actually steer the boat. So we just have the one motor for the propeller and then rig this up to be the steering. Now we don't need the wheels, we don't need anything to the right of there or to the left of there but this bit here we can use as a servo in effect So there we go, our steering servo. For the propeller, I'm going to use this. So a garden ornament. Bought it in Poundland. The hole's a bit too big, but we can fix that. So we've got the motor, got a bit of um, electrical cable insulation, and we need something like a bicycle spoke here, 
to lengthen the shaft and then propeller on the back. I'll measure across there, drill a hole in the middle somewhere and we'll stick a tube through for the propeller. I used another piece of uh, insulation off some wire to pad that centre hole out or to pad the shaft out so it fits the hole. So that should be okay. A little bit of plastic tubing there that's just the right size to go over there. I've drilled a hole in the back of there. So it'll fit in there. It'll be down at quite an angle, but that'll be alright. This is just for fun. And build a rudder that's going to stick out far enough to miss the propeller. It's going to, have to be out at quite a distance. Ideally the propeller would be down under here somewhere further forwards but we've got this gap underneath. Very convenient this little bracket off the steering or arm it's got a hole at the middle of it. It doesn't go through the top but if I drill through there I should be able to push um, the push rod, steering push rod, straight the way through. There we go. So the other end of that will be pushing the rudder. Well that's the bulk of the work done. The drive motor is just hot glued onto this big lump of styrofoam. And then the steering, I've got this set up for the rudder. I'll just stick a bit of flat plastic on there. So that will be our rudder. What I'm not sure about is what to use as the radio receiver. Whether to go straight to my hobby grade fly sky and a couple of ESCs to drive it or whether to use the um, receiver at one of these other toy cars which is where this one comes from. Anything I'm worried about if I use this one is it's not designed for a motor that's that big so it might burn that one out. Nearly there. I found another toy car that I could take the motor out of that's got some good sized uh, MOSFETs there for the H bridge so they should have plenty of power or be able to carry the power for that motor. Uh, it's also got an on off switch and that's the battery box out of the car. I've just cut it out as you can see and that's just sitting there at the moment. Extended all the wires. I uh, still haven't put the rudder on yet. What have we got? forwards backwards and right left rudder in place top on I think I forgot to mention I had to pad out the back a little bit with a bit of foam just so I could get the rudder behind the propeller. That's all that is, just a bit of um, styrofoam. Quick test in the bath just to make sure we got forwards and backwards and that sort of thing. So backwards. Might need a bigger rudder. Oh, I don't know. Might be all right. Looks 
looks like we could do a bit of weight at the back. I could just move the battery, which is sitting in the front there, move that to the back. And that should make it, make it sit down at the back better then. Put the propeller a bit further into the water. I think I've overdone it there a bit. I put the batteries in the back and a bit of lead weight and now the front's well out of the water. But that does give us the propeller in the water properly. Which is much better. So I think I might just add extra weight. To hold it down in the water properly. It's a lot quieter with the propeller right in the water as well. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll put the ba battery back in the front and put some lead weights in the back. So the whole thing is deeper in the water. Probably need some fresh batteries in there as well that's the batteries out of the car that I pinched the receiver out of. That's nice and gentle that is, I like that. I don't like fast boats. Right, that looks like that'll work. So I'll take some lead weights with me to balance it and we'll go and try it in a proper pool somewhere or lake.